It's the Score North Twin Show. Uh, crank up the burner. Crank up. I got to put that on my soundbar here so Declan and I can both have access. Oh, yes. Feel the heat. The hot stove. Heat. Actually, I like it when it explodes. Oh, it feels like. Well, it feels like it's not as hot as it maybe would have been before uh, the payroll article came out yesterday. Well, let's let's make it explode. Okay, do it again. Reckless. Oh my God! <laughs> oh God. That's Target Field Back right ahead. now. That's Target <laughs> Field. Our Pally Sports money is gone. Just <laughs> the Pally yeah, truck uh, is pulling away. Yeah, the sound <laughs> you hear one more time is uh, the sound of fifty-five million dollars in annual rights fees blowing up. Speculation. And we're slashing the payroll. So let's dive into this here, boys. Scoring our twin show. Hot stove uh, season here in full effect. we got the GM meetings taking place in Scottsdale, I believe. We're all Nashville? the major league. Was it Nashville or Scottsdale? Well, winter meetings are in Nashville. That's what it was. Okay. Yeah, I, think I think they're in I think Arizona. the GM meetings are in Scottsdale. Yeah. So we go, yeah, the way the baseball offseason works is the World Series ends, and then like a week after the World Series ends, free agency and all this stuff opens up. So they have the GM meetings first, like a week after the World Series. And then in a month from now, the uh, the winter meetings where it's it's the GMs, it's the scouts, it's the, it's everyone from every walk of baseball, basically. Everyone it's minor league play-by-play play people looking for jobs. Babe Ruth shows up. It's the one <laughs> time of year he comes back to life. The, the ghosts of old Yankees huh, walking yeah, around right. the lobby. Uh, hey, what Babe Ruth there? What do you got for me? <laughs> no, it's like a scotch. Is. Neat. Yes. And three cigars <laughs> and a couple hot dogs. Yeah, see? Uh, so here's the article from The Athletic. The Twins are going to slash their payroll. Ugh. Though no numbers are official, team sources suggested Tuesday that the Twins could reduce payroll from last year's record high, it was in the 150s, down to the 125 to $140 million range, which is a pretty wide range because, you know, that's like yes. a really good play, the difference between a really good player or not. Yes. Yeah, the Twins spent $154 million on payroll in 2023. Twins president of baseball operations, Derek Falvey, wouldn't comment on a specific amount during the Tuesday GM meetings. But following the expiration of a Bally TV deal that netted the Twins $55 million last season, Falvey acknowledged the team's payroll wouldn't be nearly as high as in 2024 as it was last season when the Twins clinched their first postseason series win since 2002 it is worth noting because i think I, i've seen some of the reaction already um from twins fans who are I think, rightfully so wondering wait a second here wait a second first this is the like the biggest season of twins success in 20 years right mm -hmm. and the first message a week after the baseball season ends is oh, that was super fun we're gonna slash payroll the cheap poll ads right so for some added context here somewhere between 12 and 15 teams are dealing with this local TV problem from Sinclair Media. It's actually a, it's at the Diamond Sports Group. It's like a yeah. subsidiary of uh, yeah. subsidiary of uh, Sinclair. So, anyways, they're like, like half the league is trying to figure out what do we do with this massive chunk of local TV revenue that's gone. Is there another partner out there for us? Are we going to have to distribute our own games and just sort of make it up in advertising money? So the Twins aren't the only team dealing with this, but because they are dealing with it. Ownership has said probably not spending the same amount of money on our baseball team as we did last year. This is so interesting because I, first of all, I know the knee jerk reaction is to just get pissed off and cheap, lash cheap, out. Cheap, 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 just cheap, lash cheap, out. Cheap, cheap. Typical Minnesota twins, typical team. Um, but this is so intriguing because of this, you know, in the, the same uh, stories that, that at least I saw from Dan Hayes of The Athletic and Bobby Nightingale of the Star Tribune, Falvey went out of his way then to paint this picture of, oh, but we got all this young talent. You don't understand. It's not, you know, we've still got a ton of young talent and that young talent's going to just step in here. So what I want to see is, are they not, are they going to trim payroll by not spending as much by making splash moves? Or are they going to start to trade away players that they deem might make too much? And this is a small one, but here's the one that caught my eye. And I think it was in Hayes' story in The Athletic. And it was something along the lines of the Twins might shop a guy like Kyle Farmer. 
So yeah. like if you're so like if you're going to start to peel away now, that's different to me than not pursuing guys. Now 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 the loss of in my opinion the loss uh potentially and it's going to I think happen now for sure of Sonny Gray is incredibly important because he was he's a Cy Young American League Cy Young finalist. He was outstanding and so I think if you just think that, well, Chris Paddock's back, he's go, he's going to step in, that's a huge leap. But my next concern is, are you also going to start to try to peel away players and not get the returns that you necessarily should to dump payroll? And to me, that's the real warning sign. That's the real, the alarm goes off, the Mackie and Judd twin show cheap pull at alarm goes off. So that's oh. what I... Are you I like hinting see. for me to hit a button there? Sorry, there we go. There's well, the no, alarm. I mean it can go off at the time. <laughs> I, I, I don't care when. But the, but the point is that's what I want to see now. Um, it's probably not good though when they have to come out this early to try to get ahead of the game and warn well, you that it's not uh, going up. So I'm not, I'm not going to dump on them yet. But I'm also very leery of what they're saying. Okay, real quick, let me. Why, why say it? Did they did they need to? And I know that they didn't like hold a press conference with Joe Polad and Derek Falvey. Obviously, you've got reporters out there in Scottsdale, and the Athletic is out there, and and it's it's an off the record conversation. It's sort of hey, the fans are curious, and the, and the, it sounds like the Twins sort of off the record said, yeah, you know, it's uh, the TV thing is a thing, and we're gonna. But did they? Did, why couldn't they just say we're not sure? We need to get through the off season and sort of see, you know, we're uh, we're looking to be competitive. That's, that's why I'm concerned. Because they already, but, yeah. That's but why? What but me. like, couldn't they just not? I think the fact that to me it seems like a weird PR strategy to come out and like, li, like literally, the well, the first announcement of the offseason was we're picking up the options on Max Kepler and Jorge Polanco, and the, and those guys are both making ten million dollars a year. But for the first non sort of transactional announcement to be, hey. hey we are slashing payroll, right? Yeah. I feel like you could have just done whatever you were going to do over the next three to five months and not said anything and then let people sort of do the math on where the payroll is, you know, a week. No, we're, people are going to ask about it, but isn't there a way to answer that question without telling the entire Twins fan base that's fired up? Hey, sorry, everyone. This is a trigger subject for most of you the last 15 years, and it's going to be extra triggering this time around. So brace yourself. My real concern is 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 if they're warning us now, like if they're saying now, this close to the end of a season that you know you finally won a playoff game, you finally broke your what nineteen year eighteen game streak. If they're saying this now, my guess is that what Hayes wrote is probably accurate, and the figure that we're going to see one fifty six drop to is probably way more towards one twenty five. That's what concerns me. 140, hmm. I don't love, but I think I can get my head around a bit. 125 would be a drastic drop. And again, if you start to trade away guys because of that, um, I think that's going to get pushback. And I will defend fans here. I think it's deservedly so. I think it's deservedly so because the Twins have created an expectation now. And 2024 should be pretty damn good, but... If you're not going to replace guys and you're going to trade guys for the sake of trading them, um, I'm not going to sit here and try and defend them if that's the case. Yeah, it's it's a tough situation, especially with the TV thing. And I think people might be losing that context of it because they just see pull ads, not spending money, black and white issue right there, like just classic them. And it's like, well, they're losing a humongous chunk of their money from the TV streaming side. And I think that sometimes gets lost. And maybe the common sports fan who's not as plugged in with everything that's going on there. And, you know, I, I'm curious on what the next TV plan looks like and where they're going to be able to, like, generate some money because they're not going to, like, just magically, right, wave a wand and get $56 million back by whenever they agree to a new TV deal, which I was told could be as early as early December that they could have a new deal in place or some type of new broadcaster, too, because we have to figure out who's going to be a play-by-play guy. But losing that chunk of money overnight, like, it makes sense that's going to drop. But, yeah, the PR spin what Phil's talking about is an interesting move to just say straight up one week after the world series that yeah, well our payroll's going down after a really good season too, where fans kind of bought back in. Yeah. I guess I would have had no problem with, Hey, go about the off season. And then in February or March, people can start doing the math 
and hey, wait a second. That's funny. You're down $20 million or $30 million from where you were last year, it seems. But at least the picture would have become sort of clear by then. So I don't know. But, you know, I'm more interested in where they rank, I think. Like, we talk about the number, the payroll number. But if half the league is losing these local TV, these big revenue deals, and there's not an immediate replacement for that revenue, then a lot of teams are going to be doing the same thing here. So last year, the Twins were 16th. So they, uh, we were seeing two figures, 154, 156, so somewhere in there. Maybe Declan can look that up for us during the show here. I'm sure he's got mm-hmm. that page open. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but they ranked 16th in payroll. That's yep. about where the Twins are going to rank. And any sort of hand-wringing over, well, yeah, but the Pol- the Polad family, this is, I feel like, this is the only area where I have defended the Polads. They've been, they've shown bouts of, like, stagnancy they have made promises to terry ryan and the and i love terry ryan but like they've they've had weird uh like as an ownership group they've had this weird sort of passive approach at times that's rubbed me the wrong way and they've had this lack of curiosity i think recently in the last five years they've changed some of that but the payroll thing i've always kind of defended in terms of they're going to be like 16th if they dip to 25th they're either rebuilding or they should be criticized they're not going to be seventh in payroll because billionaires are across the board in baseball. They're not like dipping into their checking accounts to, you know, let's let's take a $75 million loss on this year's team. That does happen sometimes. And the Twins, according to Forbes, actually took a loss on the 2022 team. We'll wait for the 2023 figures to come out. So I don't know. I think this is just sort of life as a mid-market team. And you got to find creative ways to spin some players and, Make your team better than it was in 2023. I want to see where they come down to. And and like you said, though, where they, they rank, because he, here's where I'll defend the fans that get upset is. You know, the twins gave them a product to be excited about. And now if all, all of a sudden they say, well, you know, the TV thing, we don't know because the TV thing will eventually work itself out. Um I understand the consternation there. Now, if, if you know, it changes slightly, like if they go from 156 or 154 to 142 or something like that, I don't think that that's going to be the end of the world. But if this thing, you know, but Phil, to your point, if they come, if they go from 16th or 17th in the payroll rankings to 24th or something like that, I will defend the fans who, who are upset. And the TV, you know, The TV landscape has been threatening to change for a long time now. And the reality is it's going to. And there's going to be ebbs and flows and ups and downs. Um, But I do think that that you need to keep a semblance of what your payroll was, if nothing else, for the fan base. And keep in mind, too. You, you still need to give fans a reason to want to come back to the ballpark and buy tickets. So, so like you don't want to you don't want to be so stubborn about your TV revenue dipping for a year or two that, that you actually alienate the very people who one, you want in the ballpark and two, most importantly, when you do get your TV situation in order, who who you want to watch games. So like they got to be smart here. like like it can't just be this, reactionary well tv's gone or or the 55 million is gone so we need to just dump like like it needs to be thought of in a business sense of yes this is not ideal but unless you're convinced that you're going to be screwed for 10 years on your tv uh potential income you do need to be pretty smart about how you approach this because you've got a chance right now to engage a lot of fans and the last thing that i think you want to do at this point in time is now turn around after you finally win a playoff game and alienate those same fans. Yep. That's a huge, a huge part of it. And that's why it kind of bothers me the way this is like, okay, this is now a headline right away. You didn't Mm -hmm. have, okay. A reporter asks you, Hey, what's the deal with the payroll? We all kind of see the TV situation. You don't have to be fully honest in your answer, right? You can do, you know, I will see. We're going to kind of see how the off season plays out, whatever. So they're currently right now, they're currently at like $120 million, according to Spotrack, if you include current contracts, so the Carlos Correa's, the guys that are under contract. And then you also include the two team options they just picked up on Max Kepler and Jorge Blanco and arbitration estimates for the guys that are not free agents yet, but they're under team control. So like Kyle Farmer is 
projected to be kind of a six million dollar figure. Willie right. Castro, a few million dollars. So that one hundred twenty million dollars does not include, however, Sonny Gray, who's likely to be twenty plus million dollars a year on a two three year contract in free agency. It doesn't include a center fielder because Michael A. Taylor is a free agent. So if, if the three names we've seen and, and Doogie threw out, uh, I think it was Harrison Bader he threw out on the scoop session yesterday. So Michael A. Taylor, Harrison Bader, and then Kevin Kiermeyer is another name that's been thrown out there by, I think, USA Today. Those guys are going to be between like six. Like Bader's probably six million. He was five million last year, but he's like the third of those three guys. And then Kiermeyer's probably more like 10 to 15 million dollars. So what I'm getting at here is you st- you're, you're at 120 right now. If you were to not get rid of anyone, but just try to add, you could basically add like one player and then you'd hit the ceiling that has been publicized here in the athletic. So strategically, they're going to have to move off of a Polanco, a Kepler, a farmer to clear room for a center fielder, a starting pitcher to come in here and maybe take the place of Sonny Gray or or to just bring Sonny Gray back. So strategically, how would you guys sort of look and say, all right, we got to clear some room for a starting pitcher and a center fielder. Emilio Pagan is gone, too. So if you wanted to go and replace him or bring him back as a reliever. They loved him. What happened? So what are you doing strategically is my question. How do you parse this? Go ahead, Dex. I would probably have to trade guys that are making expensive money. So like Polanco, Kepler are at least one of them. If not, Vasquez Vasquez are probably gone. That and that, well, that, that one's difficult because they signed him to be the man and or be their starting catcher, I should say, and he just completely fell off the face of the earth. And Ryan Jeffers took a big step forward. And, and unless you're giving them a prospect, or you're also taking on more money, which you don't want to do in this situation, like Vasquez almost is immovable at this point. Uh, so you have to figure out ways to basically shed off the payrolls of the yeah the Kyle Farmers, the guys that might make five to seven in in arbitration or, and and whatnot. So you have to figure out ways, I think, to trim out that type of stuff. And then if Falvey is going to tout out that, hey, we got all these in-house options, you know, ready uh, Austin Martin guys that are ready to take the next step who are going to be making basically league minimum next season, then that's a pretty good way to shave off 15 to $25 million right there by trading away a few key veteran players that are going to be expensive. So I, I think uh, part of this is what we read in the headlines from Scottsdale and w- what we saw uh, speculated recklessly, may I add, last week. Um, Kevin Kiermeyer doesn't fit then, too. L- like, so if they go out and they sign him, because he's not cheap. If they go out and sign him, then I'm not nearly as concerned about what I saw this morning. But like to me... Dex is right. This reeks more of an Austin Martin can come in and play in place of Buxton because he can't play. And by the way, you know, we're paying, and and I saw that pointed out, we're paying Buxton a lot, you know, well, yeah, okay. He can't play that much. So, so hope is not a strategy. Exactly. But, but this is where I am. This is where I'm curious and concerned. The two C's I'm curious and concerned on if, if you go out and you sign a Kiermaier and you trade a Kepler, Okay, sort of a wash, right? But if you trade a Ke- but if you trade Kepler, and you t- decide Austin Martin is going to be the guy if Buxton can't play center, which I think we all agree he probably can't, then you're going in a direction that I think can be criticized. That concerns me because you're you'd be really banking on because that's another question too is how much do you it, it would be a big gamble to start the season saying hey Brooks Lee or Austin Martin. We're gonna we're gonna trade some established veterans here, and we need you to hit the ground running day one on a team yes. that went to the second round of the playoffs and keep going. Now, yep, I think we can all agree it would be great if Austin Martin could come in here. And by the way, since we're talking salaries, he would be making I think seven hundred seventy thousand dollars as a, a first year player pre arbitration. Mm-hmm. So if you could get like immediate day one production, they got it from Edward Julian last year. We, so we, we have seen it before. Denard Span was sort of day one production back, you know, 2007, 2008. So we have seen it before, and that would be ideal. That Like the ideal scenario would be Polanco gone, Kepler gone. You get something, maybe it's prospects or whatever, and then Austin Martin, Brooks Lee are just ready to rock and roll in April of 2024. But hope is not a strategy, so we'll have to see. 
I also think it's fair to, and, and it's far from ideal, and I'm sure the poll ads hate this idea, but I think it's also fair to say this is a situation like there, like if you were drawing no one, right? Like if the team's just a mess, I understand the teams and the twins at, at one time did this got criticized. I understand why, but you know, if you're hemorrhaging dollars and everything is wrong, I see why guys get dumped. Okay. But again, I'm going to go back to, I think this TV situation for the better will figure itself out it might take a couple of years i think i'd be willing to take a little bit of a financial hit in those two years to keep up the momentum i've built for the good of where i'm going yep don't don't take a step back now don't take a step back now or if you're going to take a step back don't take a 30 million dollar step back if you're going to take a 10 million dollar step back and you're still going to be like 16th in payroll Yes. Okay. I also wonder, does the, is this sort of the beginning since, again, since half the league is impacted by just the, it's not just the folding of like Bally TV. It's really the folding of a local TV infrastructure and the way that content and distribution is so fragmented now, you know, it's, it's not like it was 20 years ago and you just had, you had a TV network and they just had to have a deal with a cable company and you're good to go. Now it's like, they got to strike deals with YouTube TV and Hulu TV and Sling TV and Xfinity and all these, and it gets complicated, so it's blowing up. I wonder what this looks like for Major League Baseball in like three to five years. Do you have, I don't think it's ever going to be like the NBA and like where it's like the, the majority of your revenue on the TV side is national revenue coming in. Or like the MLS where they said, hey, if you want to watch your game, it's on one platform. Because wouldn't a team like, I mean, the Twins would probably love that. Hey, let's band together, everyone. Let's split that revenue 30 different ways. It'll be great. Like, but the Yankees are going to raise a hand and the Dodgers and these big market teams and say, wait a second. Like the Yankees have their own network, the yes network. And they bring in like, what is it? Three or $400 million a year in revenue. The twins are bringing in 50 on a partnership. Yeah. Yeah. So how, how does that work? Like do the, are there 15 or 20 teams at sort of the, like the bottom half of the teams and the markets, do they band together and say, okay, all of our games are going to be pulled together on Apple TV or YouTube TV or whatever the platform is. And then we split the revenue equally as sort of the bottom half of Major League Baseball. I'm so curious to see where this goes. So I think from a standpoint of, I, I think the, the concern, rightfully so, is production costs. Because like the nice thing is, if I sign with um, Diamond Sports Group, they take care of the trucks, they take care of everything. And I yeah. mean, that is that is millions of dollars, okay? Talent so now... Player. And they and they sell the advertising, and now I have to do do that. But that being said, again, th- this is where I think it's going to be okay eventually, because and the one thing that might surprise you is evidently the national bidding on baseball contracts for for the national product th- th- those games is very very high because sports is really the last bastion yeah. of live events. Yep. So like advertisers love sports. Because you know what? I can't fast forward through a commercial break unless I DVR the, the game. And of course, sports is best consumed live. So actually, the pieces of the pie that are being split from a national perspective are going up in baseball because baseball's still being bought. Now, the thing with the Twins and these small market teams is once they figure this out, once they've got their plan, it's going to be profitable. Like it's going to be very profitable, profitable, Mm -hmm. because again, you're going to take the advertising revenue that comes in and advertisers love live sports. So that that's my point is I think this is short term. I think this is short term pain for a lot of long term game. And I would hate to see it influence a team to the point of they just decide to go on the cheap completely because they project a couple of years of trying to actually get their act together. Because to your point, Phil, I think it eventually gets to a point where where there is a solution and it's going to be far better than what they've got right now with Bally and Diamond, Sinclair, blah, 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 blah. So I don't think that this is going to be like some 10-year problem. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think you make a bunch of good points. We'd love to hear from you guys too, Twins fans, in the YouTube comments section, Score North YouTube channel. Like and subscribe if you could on this, if that's where you're consuming this. 
Um, let us know. What do you think when you saw that headline? Or maybe this is the first time that you've seen it consuming this episode. What do you think? Would you be are you would you be mad? Would you would you cancel your season tickets? Let us know what you think in the YouTube comment section. And if you consume the Scorner Twin Show on uh, Apple or Spotify, a five star rating and a positive review can help us continue to grow this community of Twins fans. Before we uh, part ways, I think we should squeeze in five minutes for an immaculate grid here, boys. Do it. Do it. All right. Let's fire this thing up. We're looking to go nine for nine. Oh, no. The silver slugger category oh, my that Judd loves. They're my favorite. No, you, you know what? It's just one, though. Because now it's like two on Saturdays. It's like 10 different categories. No, yeah, the Saturdays are oh, the, I, I will go on the record. The Saturday grids here. are the best. Yep. There you you know, we, we could also, because you can go back and do previous grids, we could like agree mm -hmm. to not do a Saturday grid and then save it for like a Monday or Tuesday show. Just a thought. We'll, we'll talk about that, yeah. I'll yeah. take that day off. Mm -hmm. We need a Yankee who was a Brave, a Yankee who was an Angel, and a Yankee who was a Brewer. A Washington Nat or Expo who was a Brave, Nat Expo who was an Angel, Nat Expo who was a Brewer, and then a Brave who won a Silver Slugger, an Angel who won a Silver Slugger, and a Brewer who won a Silver Slugger. Silver Slugger, right. I believe we can hover over that. I think it started in 1980. 1980. 1980. Yeah, that was so. a mistake. Oh, man. All right, so boys. I, I, love Fielder. I love Silver Sluggers because there's pitchers involved. So up until two years ago, Zach Giovanni, Giovanni Gallardo oh, he won a bunch one, of bombs. and he was like hit 600 <laughs> in a year. Love That's me a good one. Okay. Some Giovanni. Giovanni. One percent. One percent. Let's go. Beautiful. Let's go. No. Okay. The Angels. A lot Angel, of options You're not going to have a pitching option, but you got a no. lot of sluggers. You got a lot of. I'm just going to throw names out, okay? Mo Vaughn, Tim Salmon, Ooh, Tim Salmon, Vladimir Guerrero, Troy Gloss. Troy Gloss, definitely. That's Reggie. a really good one. Troy Gloss hmm? hit like 50 home runs one year, I think, or something. He had like 40. I don't know if it was 50. He had 40. Jackson, probably. Yeah. Jackson? Reggie 80. Jackson in the early 80s. Dave Winfield played there. Yeah, you're right. There. Carew, did he overlap? Or was that more 70s? Nope. Angels. He played until 80 through 86, if I'm not mistaken. Carew. I'm snuck one in. I'm going to write some names down here. Uh, Glaus. Right. Let's go Glaus. Carew on the list. Glaus. We can come back to this, too. Mm -hmm. We could just, or we could just do Troy Glaus. Yeah, Troy Glaus. Pretty sure on that, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was. 5%? 5%? 10. 10%. Uh, 10%. Uh, 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 all right. Uh, pitchers work again here. Uh, Max Freed won the last one before they got rid of Silver Slugger, I believe, for pitchers. Um, and I, Maddox was a Gold Glover, but Glavin and uh, I think Smoltz were also like pretty decent hitters. Glavin could hit, good athlete, hockey player too. Yeah, Glavin I mean, might be it. You're definitely on your own with the pitchers, Smol Silver Sluggers Smoltz, for me. Know. So, Smoltz, oh. I don't know. Tom Glavin could. I'm sure, yes, he could hit. You're rare. I have no idea if you want a silver slugger. Phil? I have no idea on pitchers and silver sluggers. Zero clue. So are, you com is are you comfortable with this? Uh, I mean, if Declan's confident, sure. Okay. I'm confident. Okay. I'm confident. Okay. I'm glad. I'm I'm I love I'm the pitcher silver sluggers. Come on. Come on. Let's go. 2%. Come okay. On. Drafted by the Los Angeles Kings. Mm -hmm. Okay. De Denny Nagel was a, a brave and Yankee. That's a, probably a pretty rare one. Pretty rare one right there. Former gopher. Let's try it. Denny Nagel. Yeah. 0.5. 0.5. Mm -hmm. so. uh, Orlando Cabrera, who played with the Expos a lot, and then Twins traded for him when he was with the Angels. Yep. Yep. That's Those a good one. Option here. Anytime we can use former Twins. And former Expos. I love the Expos list. One percent. Nice. Look at him. Look at that picture. Yankees and Angels. Reggie Jackson. Dave Winfield. Do people remember Mark Teixeira as an Angel? Wasn't he only there for? Uh, where was Michael. he for a half season? Uh, was that Braves? Braves. Oh Texas, yeah, yeah. The Braves. Angels. Right. Yankees. He wasn't there long. Like, I don't know if that would be huge. This is pretty recent. Um. 
I think Bartolo would work there too. That might be high. Bartolo, I think, would work also with. Do people uh, remember? Uh, with. Nat I feel like people. I feel like people remember. Reggie Jackson. I don't know that uh, they are. I don't know that they remember Dave Winfield as much for, for this stuff. Dave Winfield's a really good one, because it's old school. They're gonna remember him as a Yankee, but not as much oh, as yeah. an Angel, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what Angel. I'm, that's, when, that's what I'm thinking. Yes. Okay. Yep. Let's go okay. old school. Dave Winfield. Three. Winnie. Oh, okay. Good. Winnie. Good call. Good call. Let's go. All right, we got we got uh, two minutes here because we got we got other other stuff to record. We gotta go. We gotta write that down session to get to. Um, God, Brewers, Yankees, Brewers, Yankees. Oh, you know what? George Boomer Scott, who played for the who played for the Royals, the the Red Sox, the Brewers, and I think he ended he ended as a Yankee. Mm. George Scott, love it. George C. Scott. No, 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 no. Not the actor. Uh, yes, from sixty six to yep. seventy nine. Yep, yep. Wow, dude. Point six. Point, Point six. six. Right. Oh, I just nailed that. Boomer. Uh, that's uh, Boomer. Gio Gonzalez. Mm. <laughs> yep. G-O-G. Like Let's do it. Gio, I love Gio Gonzalez. He's just a... He's kind of... 12. Oh, 12. Oh, 12. Oh. Interesting. He's, He's kind of an, un, an underrated uh, grid, grid guy. guy, you know? He really yeah. is. And now a Brave Expo, ah. National Brave. Same division, right? Um... Did Jeff I'm trying Reardon to go back and go back in my. Did you, did you Jeff, say Jeff Reardon? No, no, no. I'm I'm asking. Did Jeff Reardon end up with the Braves? Uh, I think it was the Red Sox. Scratch is that. A, don't. Is this an Edwin territory? It definitely <laughs> could be Edwin territory. He pitched for the Nationals for sure. I think he pitched uh, for the Braves too, actually. Oh wait, uh, are we in Jesse Orozco territory? He was an Expo. Was he a Brave? Dude, he might Judd? have been. I don't oh, remember man. him as a Brave, but he's school. That's a extensive resume did uh, andres galarraga finish his career with the nationals why do i think that or no he was an expo no, no, he, did, did he, he finish was originally it? He was with, the, an expo. with the braves i mean he, he might finished. have wasn't galarraga a brave i think he was i feel like i remember i think that. the big cat was a brave i think you're right dude okay andres pretty galarraga sure you're right pretty sure i remember the him on cat. the superstation sorry in TV advance news. if this is wrong i think you're right oh all right 30, 30 oh, oh dude look at that wow boys and boys, with that it was worth, this show was worth it just for the grid it was and with that uh we will sunset this episode of the scorner twin show slashing payroll left and right payroll carnage see you guys